I'm going to show you how to beat negative emotions, avoid emotional eating, and have a happier life. Hi, my name is Dr. Grant, and today we're going to talk about why this episode will benefit you. You see, there are many people out there who struggle with the same things as me. We all need some help from time to time, but it can often be hard to find the right person or know where to begin. So that's why I've decided that now is the perfect time. I'm going to show you how to beat negative emotions, avoid emotional overeating, and have a happier life. Hi, my name is Dr. Grant, and today we're going to talk about why this episode will benefit you. You see, there are many people out there who struggle with the same things as me. We all need some help from time to time, but it can often be hard to find the right person or know where to begin. So that's why I've decided that now is the perfect time for me to share my story with you in hopes that it'll inspire others like myself. I often receive many questions from people that ask me why I created The Dr. Grant Show. Well, now I'm going to share with you the moment that transformed my life. I remember the day my mother passed away like it was yesterday. It was a difficult time for our family. Shortly after her death, we were sitting in the funeral home when the director walked in and shared some heartbreaking news with us. They couldn't bury her in a normal size casket. Her body was just too large. My heart raced as I realized that we might not be able to have her funeral after all. You see, unfortunately, my mother's weight had gotten so out of control that they had to special order a casket to bury her. But thankfully, we were able to work something out and hold a service for her. However, my life was never the same after that experience. You see, when I was younger, I always wondered why my mother seemed to struggle with her weight. She was so smart. She was a member of the Mensa Society and she had a lot of willpower. So what was the problem? It wasn't until later that I realized that my mother didn't have the right tools to help her lose weight. She tried all sorts of diets and exercise programs, but they never seemed to work for her in the long term. I remember when my mom was trying to lose weight. She would read all these diet books and try all these different techniques, but nothing really worked. I think it was because she didn't have the right tools. So. After years of struggling with emotional eating and obesity, I finally had a breakthrough idea. What if, what if, what if, what if my mother had had the right tools? Tools that provided an all-in-one solution, attacked emotional eating, obesity, and food addiction from all sides. So, in honor of my mother, I created the first scientific method that identifies and helps remove what stands in stressed emotional eaters and food addicts way. The method is called the Phoenix Six Method, and it's been a lifesaver for me and so many others. With the Phoenix Six Method, we can finally overcome our struggles with food once and for all. And that is what the Dr. Grant Show is Based on. Okay, okay. So back to our show topics, how to beat negative emotions, avoid emotional eating, and have a happier life. You know that feeling when you're really upset and all you want to do is eat? I'm sure we've all been there at one point in our lives, whether it's because of a bad day, an argument with a loved one, or just plain stress eating. It can happen to the best of us. There are times where I feel like my emotions take over and I don't have any control over them anymore. But thankfully, after years of struggle and trial and error, including spending thousands of dollars on two doctor degrees, I discovered something called EFT tapping and sound baths, which have helped me immensely. It's basically taking what alternative health practitioners call tapping and applying this technique to music emitted by singing crystal bowls, which a trained practitioner plays for your healing purposes. The results were so remarkable, so much so that I, I, I had to immerse myself 
in it. <laughs> so I became and, and trained in EFT tapping, became certified in sound bath therapy and healing, and I created a approach that addresses everything just for stressed emotional eaters, people that binge, food addicts, and people that are trying to lose weight. For those of you that just tuned in, hi, I'm Dr. Grant, and I help stressed food addicts and emotional eaters to take the guesswork out of getting healthier so they can reclaim their joy, whatever that looks like for them, and gain energy without enduring those Captain Obvious conversations and suggestions. We do this via the Phoenix Six Method, via my virtual wellness practice, which gives everyone everything they need in just one place. You get mindset, fitness, food, all scientifically validated information, and it's all customized just so for how are we you. going to accomplish this during our time together, eh? I have 10 steps for you that we'll be covering today. Step number one, identify your negative emotions. Step number two, reframe the negative emotions. Step number three, reprogram your subconscious mind. Step number four, identify the gap between wants and expectations. Step number five, nourish. Step number six, practice meditation or yoga to calm yourself down and stay focused and stay on track. I could just go on and on about that. <laughs> anyway, practice meditation or yoga to calm yourself down. Step number seven, write down what you really want. Step number eight, allow the universe to arrange your life to meet your true desires. Step number nine, give yourself permission to receive. Finally, step number 10, enjoy. Let's deep dive into the shall we? So, let's go. Let's deep dive into 10 steps how to beat negative emotions, avoid emotional eating, and have a happier life because you deserve it. Let's unpack this, shall we? All right, let's go. So back to that step number one, where first I share it with you to identify your negative emotions. So step number one, identify your negative emotions. Remember, most importantly, that negative emotions are temporary. Your situation that is causing the negative emotion, it is temporary. The argument that you may have had, that nagging bad feeling that you may be experiencing, which feels like it is just simply never going to end. It's never going to get out of your life. If you don't take anything else from this talk and this time that we've spent together, remember it is temporary. When you attack the negative emotion, First and foremost, from this perspective, the pressure valve begins to release its hold that it has on your life. Taking drastic measures that are rooted in the energy of scarcity and deprivation begin to lose their appeal. This is why it is so crucial, so pivotal to remember that the negative emotion is temporary. Now, once you remember this, you are able to more clearly walk the path to identifying your negative emotion. When you name it, 
you shine a light on it and it allows you to take the next steps to address it. I once had a client share with me that she wanted in our preliminary discussion to learn how to no longer feel negative emotions, to get rid of her negative emotions. And I share with her, you want your negative emotions because they are your little red flare going up, almost like an SOS. And depending upon the intensity and the energy of said negative emotion, it lets you know how serious this SOS is. It lets you know whether or not you should pause immediately, take a step back and evaluate something that's going on in your life. It could be your intuition talking to you. It could be a higher consciousness talking to you, telling you not to go in the direction that you so meticulously planned. It could be your body sharing with you that you've had enough. It's time to use your voice where perhaps in the past, you stayed silent. Your situation may be different, and this could be for you or someone that you love. But remember, heed your negative emotions. They are a good thing because if this, if this is your negative emotion and the true root of the problem here in my hand is this. Once you begin to lift and solve and identify what the negative emotion is, underneath that negative emotion is the true issue. It's the true root of your problem. So embrace your negative emotions and identify them. All right, let's go on to number two. Reframe negative emotions. Reframing your negative emotions is extremely important because it helps you attach a realistic perspective. It also, from a bioenergetic standpoint, meaning the energy field of your body, the physical biology of your body, your heart, and your mind, when you reframe those negative emotions, like what I was leading you in the direction of here, an interesting thing happens. It allows you to see more clearly things that were originally out of focus. When you couple it up with number one, which is identify your negative emotions, the fog begins to lift. Things that were originally unclear and blurry become clear and come into focus. A perfect example of this was one client that I was working with. They felt that their boss on their job, and perhaps you can relate, kept piling on more work for them to do. And it always seemed to happen at the very last minute with not much of a window. Whereas no one else in her team received the assignment. She felt taken advantage of. She felt that perhaps she needed to leave her job. After our second session together, she began to learn how to reframe the negative emotion and look at it through a different lens. This allowed her to open up the lines of communication with her boss and she discovered that this wasn't an insult, this was actually a compliment. He knew that he could depend on her. And if everything else fell by the wayside, he knew he could hand her that project and it would not only get done, it would get done by either exceeding and or meeting his wildest expectations. He had come to depend upon her and actually planned on giving her a raise when it came time for her evaluation time. So this is what I mean by reframing the negative emotions. It allows you to explore other options as to why you may be feeling this negative emotion and how to look at it differently. All right, let's go into 
number three, the third step. Reprogram your subconscious mind. Now, there are a myriad of different resources that are available to help you do this as long as you're doing this with a trained, qualified practitioner. When I work with various clients, depending upon the challenge that they're experiencing, I will utilize several things to help them reprogram their subconscious mind. There are certain tools available such as hypnosis, rapid hypnosis, meditation, EFT tapping, neuro-linguistic programming, also known as NLP. Now, allow me to say this. Reprogramming your subconscious mind can be undertaken, the first steps can be undertaken unassisted. However, it is much faster and much easier to find a qualified, trained practitioner that you feel comfortable with and that you really, really bond with, that you feel gets you. The reason why I say this as opposed to cracking open a book, for example, is because interacting with another person that's trained in that area to help you, they are trained to quickly zero in, almost like a heat-seeking missile at the target based on what you shared is the desired outcome that you want. And this makes the process of reprogramming your subconscious mind easier, simpler, and faster to help you get to your goals. Step number four, identify the gap between wants and expectations. This is extremely significant. If you don't listen to anything else, please, please stop what you're doing, as long as you're not driving or operating heavy machinery, and listen very closely. The statement that I'm sharing with you, this comes from years of experience talking to people that struggle with emotional eating, food addiction, nighttime binging, and the desire to lose weight. When I speak to these people, what I've been finding as a commonality is they'll often say they, for example, wish to drop 50 pounds or 20 pounds. As we talk further and I ask for what purpose would dropping 20, 50, 60 pounds do for you, they begin to share with me several key things that they feel would change their lives once they reach their goal. When I press a little deeper and question a little bit deeper, some of them begin to discover that this was something that was placed upon them as a societal or a loved one's expectation, but it is not truly what they want. And these are two entirely different steam engines going in opposite directions. What you truly want versus what society expects what you truly want versus what a loved one told you is the standard for beauty. What you truly want versus what a loved one expects based on a dress size indicating and being the marker of beauty. I, I often refer to this process as terraforming because you're pulling up everything and examining it easily, simply, and effortlessly with the right person to guide you. You're, you're changing your environment 
you're changing your expectations based on no longer through the lens of what someone else told you you should do, be, look like, exist as, but what your heart and soul truly call out to do. The difference is breathtaking. The difference also is more compelling for you to reach your health goals and it becomes easier. It's almost as if you are skating on the sidewalk on a path that was originally bumpy because you were trying to fit your expectations and your end goal into this hole that doesn't fit you because it's not your true soul's calling. By comparison, once you truly identify what your want is and you see that chasm and gap, then the road and that sidewalk, if you're on a skateboard and you're skating on that sidewalk, it smooths out. The path becomes clearer, smoother, and easier to get to. Often in my virtual wellness practice, we don't even talk about food. We don't even talk about dieting. We don't talk about how long you should run on a treadmill or work out. Because until you get to this step, step number four, we're doing these things, but we're doing these things and they're not sustainable because they are not your true soul's calling and purpose. You haven't found your why? All right, let's go on and get to number five. Step number five. Step number five is easy. Nourish. Nourish your mind. Nourish your body. Nourish your spirit. Many, many years ago, back in the 1900s, Research emerged from scientists that in an effort to solve the human question and dilemma of health and wellness, they separated the mind, the body, and the spirit. And there was an immense benefit at one point in time. Great developments in medicine were discovered, healing of the human body, the mechanics. However, however, the ancient societies always knew worldwide that one could never truly treat and help the human body achieve its goals unless, unless you took an integrative approach, a functional approach, which entails one's mind, body, and spirit. They are inseparable as much as one might try. When a plan is created that nourishes all three of these things, something beautiful begins to blossom out of that because you're not only enriching the soil of one part of you, you're enriching the soil of all parts of you. You find out what truly makes your soul sing. You find out what has been in the way, truly, truly in the way, your blind spot to achieving your goals. You achieve a level of contentment where you're able to let go of fear, worry, and doubt. And this feeds your ability to no longer binge, no longer stress eat, no longer emotionally eat. And weight loss, if that's your goal, 
or toning your body, getting stronger, if that's your goal, it becomes this easy, very simple journey to move towards instead of something that feels like you're being pushed by force. All right, let me go on to your sixth step. Once we've gotten all of these other steps buttoned in, we can more easily move into the sixth step, which is practice meditation or yoga to calm yourself down. Now, I could bury you in tons and tons of papers and research that talk about the immense benefits of meditation. I could also bury you in tons and tons of papers about the immense benefits of yoga from its anti-inflammatory benefits to weight loss, even if no change in diet has been undertaken. But there is something else that I like to bring to your attention. Practicing meditation or yoga does more than calm you down. Practicing meditation or yoga and finding what type of yoga and what type of meditation works for you and your situation, it also works on your body's energetic centers, which are called chakras. And these chakras, no matter your perspective on it, whether you believe chakras are real or not, <laughs> they believe in you. Now, there is a Russian scientist that has actually found a way to measure chakras and has actually shown that even something as simple as your mood, the state of your body, if you have a cold, something that was said to you earlier that made you happy can actually energetically shift your chakras in one direction or another. For those of you that are unfamiliar with chakras, there are chakras are energy centers in the body. They are in your energetic and uh, esoteric field. There are seven of them. And each one is responsible for a certain aspect of either your ability to feel safe, your ability to feel loved, your ability to create, your sexuality, your ability to speak up and feel comfortable speaking up, your identity, your I am and who you are, your connection to the divine. When these are in balance, there is less of an emphasis on obtaining, for example, material goods or feeling unstable or feeling undeserving. You're able to give yourself permission to truly give and receive pleasure amongst other things. So this is why it is so important to practice meditation or yoga to not only calm yourself down, but it also helps you remain focused. It also helps you continue to keep the part of the brain on that is responsible for critical thinking. You see, when you're unable to calm down, when you're constantly stressed, many people are literally cutting off and shutting down the part of the brain that is responsible for problem solving and critical thinking because we begin to start thinking from what's called in yoga, the monkey mind. And unfortunately, the monkey mind is only concerned with one thing. Does it keep me alive? Does it keep me safe? Those higher functions of uh, self-gratification, nourishment, feeling comfortable in your body, experiencing joy, feeling connected to the divine, 
those are lost and gone because we're still operating in the monkey mind. When you're able to reduce the amount of monkey mind running the show and deactivate it, allow it to take a seat in the back or maybe in the trunk, for example, of your life and your daily activities and goings about, the appeal and the need to binge or nighttime binge, emotionally eat, give in to food cravings, overeat, stress eat, it all begins to lose its appeal. Imagine that. Imagine how your life would change and transform if you no longer had that compelling feeling to overeat. No matter what happened in your day, whether you had a day that went according to plan or if it just went a little bit off the rails, it wouldn't matter because you are in control. You're able to summon the ability to stay in control and you keep your eye on the principal mission that fits with your life. Step number seven. Now that we've gone through training that adorable mind of ours through yoga, meditation, identifying truly through certain energetic practices, once again, this would go a whole lot faster if you align yourself with someone that's trained and certified in these areas. Now it's time to write down what you really want. The reason why I said that this is step seven is because by now, you've had some time to really take a step back and look at your life. Think back to when you were younger. What did you really want to do when you were seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12? What did you envision your life would be like? What subjects were you attracted to in school? What made your heart sing? Now, now let's cross-reference that. Let's overlap that with your current life now. Where did we preserve those things that you always wanted? Now it's time to write down what you really want and prune away the rest. It, this is your life that you have to live. This is a true declaration of what works for you from now until something else changes. And remember, it's not set in stone. You can always pivot. When you do this and perform this as your step seven, after doing the previous steps, you will get a clearer, more accurate picture of your career, your purpose. You'll get a more clear and accurate picture even of your relationships and how you want people to treat you and how you want to treat them. And you'll be able to accomplish this without guilt without shame, in and from a joyous place. All right, let's go on to step number eight. Allow the universe to arrange your life to meet your true desires. Now, regardless of what or who you believe in, there is still tons of scientific research to show that there is a divine force out there somewhere that when you tap into it, when you relax into it, when you trust in it, you are giving it the opportunity to move ahead of you as you journey through this thing called life to arrange your life once again to meet your true desires. And this is the reason why it's so crucial to go through all of the previous steps, because with your seventh step, as you take the time to write down what you really, really want, mm, now you're telling your mind to focus on those things exclusively. And now the universe, whatever you believe in, 
can get to work because now it has specific instructions on what to go get you. Number nine, step number nine, give yourself permission to receive. Now, on the surface, this sounds pretty easy. Of course, of course. Why wouldn't I give myself permission to receive, Dr. Grant? You'd be surprised. When I speak to certain people about stress eating and emotional eating or losing weight, and when you really immerse yourself in what that new reality looks like, you'd be surprised at a little pinprick of fear begins to take place because they've wrapped themselves up in the identity of their struggles. What happens if you are now a happy person instead of a person that was always not the optimist? How would your life change if now you could comfortably and truly wear whatever it is that you want? Are you truly ready to step into the shoes of that person that is more successful than you ever imagined? How does it feel now to sit down and eat and no one's looking at you, and, or if they are, you don't concern yourself because you finally feel comfortable in your own skin? How does it feel to have the extra sexual advances in attention? both invited and uninvited. You see, all of these things, you must give yourself permission to receive and also be comfortable with how you'll handle the situation. There is no right or wrong answer. There is only the answer that fits and works for you. Finally, step number 10. Enjoy. Enjoy the fireworks of your transformed life. Enjoy the love that you truly, truly have been yearning for, but for some reason you just didn't feel comfortable receiving. Enjoy weight loss that is more effortless than anything you've ever experienced before. Instead of this push-pull cycle, this up and down cycle, the feeling of tanking when you look at the scale. Imagine all of these things being gone. Imagine getting the promotions that you want. Imagine finding more joy in your job. Imagine, just imagine how your life would change for the joy that you want in your life. It is possible. All you have to do is follow these 10 steps <laughs> and enjoy. Now, you might be using food in an unhealthy way to cope with negative emotions. Our method, the Phoenix Six Method, it is a natural alternative to help you get back in touch with your feelings and reduce emotional eating triggers like stress or anxiety. If you think the Phoenix Six Method could help you make overeating less of a problem for you, then join us in one of our monthly master classes or accelerators or join us by working just one-on-one -on -one where you can get a tailor-made plan just for you. In my virtual wellness practice, I have worked to create something for many, many stressed emotional eaters, food addicts, people that are looking to stop binge eating and nighttime binge eating, lose weight, but I've worked to make sure that everything that's provided is scientifically sound. No conjecture, no reading a book and then running out and publishing it and creating a class that you have to sit through. Everything is interactive. So if you enjoy 
one-on-one -on -one attention, if you enjoy getting your questions answered, if you enjoy feeling loved and feeling like someone is in your corner on everything, no stone unturned, all questions addressed specifically in your area who is in your corner to help you succeed, then I highly recommend that you check out our website and schedule a get to know you session. And see if this is right for you or your company. We have corporate wellness programs as well. And we cover your fitness with yoga and personal training, since I'm certified in both. We cover holding your hand step-by-step -step for those scary new dishes with virtual fitness and cooking classes. We cover your bioenergetic healing through EFT tapping and the latest and most innovative bioenergetic techniques to help you, such as sound baths and sound therapy. All of these things are created and introduced at the right time in order to propel and help move your health forward. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching The Dr. Grant Show. My name is Dr. Kirsten Grant. My contact information is listed below. Much love to you. See you next week. Bye.